Welcome to the last and third part of this tutorial series where we show how we created our intro video. If you're looking for part one and two, you can find links to it in the cards up there or also in the description below. But actually you don't need to watch the other videos if you're only interested in how to fine tune an animation in After Effects. So you've just seen the intro clip again, that's what we've been creating in the previous video. Only our project wasn't finished yet. Basically, it needs three more things. The first one is motion blurriness, then comes lighting effects and finally music and sound effects. But let's start with the motion blur first. If you're familiar with my Premiere Pro tutorials, you might have seen a pretty time consuming way to make that. And that's why I usually would refer to After Effects if you'd like to add motion blurriness. And here's why. In your layers window, just check the boxes for motion blur of which you would like to enable this. And then you can enable or disable the global motion blur by pressing on this button up here. And that's it. After Effects will do all the rest for you. So let's head to the second finish, which are lighting effects. Now, there are a number of ways to do that. You have the virtual lighting, which only works in a 3D space. And since we have a 2D animation, we can't really do this. Then there are lighting effects through plugins. These are just normal effects which you can add to any layer. If you search for light in your effects window, you already locate a few. And then the last technique is by blending different layers. And that's what I've done in my intro video. So let's dive into After Effects and see how we can do that. So this is a project that we've created in the previous video. And we're going to work further on this to make the lighting effects or actually to blend different layers together to impress that we have some lighting effects. So this here is the first scene where the camera actually popped in from below. And then we see some lights coming out of it like it's a projector. So let's blend this light to make it more dynamic. So let's locate that layer. It's right here, light. And we've actually sliced that up because right here we've got an animation of that light and then it's going to a whole full screen lighting or actually a, a, a solid. And it's at that point that we have uh, sliced that layer into two pieces. So we're first going to do the first uh, lighting effect or actually blending technique on the first layer. Hence that can be easily done by actually changing the mode. And that can be done from this column right here. If you can't see the mode column, what you can actually do is right click in here in the columns, go to columns and then just select modes. And then that will appear. Now currently it's set to normal and that's just the default blending or actually no blending at all. And if we open that up, we get a pretty big list of all kinds of blending techniques that we can choose from. Now, usually you are going to pick between these three categories up here. The first one here is the darken uh, category. And that means it will actually some kind of key out all the brighter areas and leave the dark parts visible. Then the second category will do the, the opposite thing. So it will show the lighter parts and it will key out the darker areas. And here we've got some more colored uh, blending modes. Now usually, and that's also how I've actually learned to use these blending modes. And that is just by trying out all of them and see which effect looks the best. Some very common blending modes are, for example, the add blending mode. Because this is probably one of the more extreme ones out here. And let me just select that one. You can already see what it does over here. It actually blends with the layer below that one. So that's the background. And already you can see a lot more dynamic now in this lighting. It, it looks a lot more like an actual light than just a solid that has been decreased in opacity. Now this is the first step into using these blending modes, but there are a lot more things that we can do with this. For example, I'm going to duplicate this light effect by just pressing the Ctrl D or the Command D for the Mac users that will have a duplication of it. And now you can see that it's pretty blown out. And that's because both of these are now set to add. So what it will actually do is the first lighting will actually blend with the second lighting. And then that one will blend again with the background. So we've got three layers now which are blended together. Now two times the same blending doesn't always give that good results. So what I'm going to do is set two different blending modes. And I'm actually going to choose for the one below for the overlay blending mode. And look what an interesting thing that we're getting right here. When I'm going to disable the first layer now, you'll see what it actually looks like when having only add and when having the overlay with it. 
So it's a lot more dynamic, as you can see. Now, what does the overlay actually do? I'm just going to like disable the second layer for a moment. As you can see, it actually only alters a little bit of the colors. It doesn't leave that much of the brightness anymore from the yellow solids. Now, this very subtle change actually blends very good with the add layer. Now, let's bring this even further. I want to add some sort of a glow onto it. Now, a glow is pretty intense, so we're going to add that onto the add layer. So the second layer right here. Just go to your effects and presets and search for the fast blur effect. It's right here. Drag that onto your layer, which holds the add mode, and then increase the blurriness just a tiny bit. And already you will see that we have some sort of a glow effect to it. Now, we are losing those hard edges, which we kind of need for the projector. So what I want to do is master the overlay layer, and that can easily be done by just moving that above the add layer, like so. And already now you can see that we have some more harder edges right here, but we do retain that nice glow. So that's a way on how you can add some more lighting effects to a 2D animation. Just blend layers together, but remember that you can also duplicate layers and have different kind of blend modes to them. All right, let's go further into the animation. Right here, this is the second background, and I'm also going to set this to the add blend mode like that, so it's a bit more dynamic. And let's further again, right here, this uh, transition. Also here, we're going to add some more lighting effects to it. Now, this is pretty interesting here. This is not a solid, but it's actually a texture. So that's going to give some interesting results, as we have a lot more information now on which the blending mode can work with. Right here, this is my background, and again, I'm going to duplicate this. So just press Ctrl D or Command D for the Mac users. And now I actually have this background animation double. And I'm going to change the mode. I'm just going to set it back to add. Now this looks pretty nice. Now it even gets more interesting when we're going to offset these two layers upon each other. So select the layer above and just press the S key for the scale. I'm just going to zoom in a bit more because we did do some keyframes onto it. So make sure that you don't mess this up. I'm going to align my play hatch to the last keyframe here. And instead of 40, and instead of 40, which is the exact same keyframe as later below, as we've duplicated that one, I'm going to increase this just a tiny bit more. So right now, these two layers are offset to each other. And that definitely gives some interesting results inside the animation right here. Let me just enable and disable that layer so that you can see the before and the after. As you can see, it expands a bit more to the edges right here as this one is more scaled up as the layer below. Now, this lighting effect is going to be a bit too intense when we have revealed the ending scene. So I'm actually just going to fade this thing out. So right after the animation is done of that, of the opening of the background here, we're going to select that layer, press the T button to animate the opacity. And I'm going to create a keyframe for 100% and go a little bit forward and then just make it zero. So when I'm going to play this right now, you will see that it looks pretty interesting. So we've got some sort of a flash going on by only just blending these two layers. Now there's one more thing that I want to do before closing the screencast. As you know, in the beginning, we've set a motion blurriness for all the layers. And it's working perfectly, as you can see. But when you're going to see these flippy images right here, then you will see that there is no motion blurriness on them. And that's actually because we haven't animated any position or rotation or anything. No, we've actually animated an effect. And After Effects doesn't see that as a movement, but just as an effect. So we're going to have to add some motion blurriness on them ourselves. Now again, in After Effects, that's very easily done by another plugin. Just search for in your effects and presets for the force motion blurriness right here. Just drag that on your pictures or on those flippy cards right here. This one also. Number two and finally number three. Now you don't have to do much or basically anything in these settings. You can do so if you want to, if you want to control the motion blur. But basically it works out of the box. So just drag that to it and it will automatically add the motion blurriness to it as you can see. There we go. So that was a last tip that I want to give you before closing the screencast. Now we'll render your animation and bring it into Premiere Pro, where we'll add some music and sound effects. But let's start with the resources first. Where do we find music and sound effects? Well, you can record your own, but that's not always so convenient. So we'll make use of music and sound libraries. 
If you're working on a personal project, you can use websites like freesound.org, where you can download sound effects for free, but you'll always have to attribute to the creator. As for music, you can go to CC Mixter. They even have some free music for commercial use. Now, free has its benefits, of course, but there are some downsides, like in most cases you have to attribute the author, which is, of course, very reasonable. But if you're looking at yourself and your own project, it doesn't look so well to have different names across your video. Also, such libraries are usually not so big, and with all the respect for the creators, the quality isn't always so good. So then we're looking at paid music, and I'm not talking about iTunes or something, but music of which you can actually buy a license from. And if you're doing commercial work, like I'm using my intro video, then you need a license for it. It's like a driver license, but then for music. And if you don't have a license, you'll get punished. So where to get those, and what's the cost? Well, again, there are many websites that offer this, and I will showcase two of them. The first one is the very popular Audio Jungle. They have a huge library that holds music and sound effects. They have some great stuff, but because of their large collection, you often have to search pretty long, and not all of their music are so great. So then there's also Cinephonics, which I'm a big fan of. Now, they are more specialized for TV and commercials, which you will also notice in their high-quality collection. This makes them a bit more expensive also, but I really like their search engine. It works a lot better than Audio Jungle. One downside is that they don't sell sound effects, only music. Now, we're also partnered up with them, and I was able to pull out some pretty big discount codes. They're pretty exclusive, so I've put all the information in the description below how to get those, together with all the other resources that I was talking about. So you know where to get your beautiful sounds now. It's time to choose something. Always start with a music clip, and then look for sound effects. Because sometimes you will find a clip that has a great beat that falls right on some movement of your animation. And then it could be that you don't need any extra sound for it. Now a problem that I was often going through is that I was searching for music clips of a short length, or I would search for logo sound or something. But that will limit yourself a lot to a bigger range of music clips. So I would just search for the perfect tune, no matter for which purpose the website says it is, or how long the song is. Now let's go into Premiere to compress a 2 minute song into a 10 second song. So we are inside Premiere and I've got my music file open, but also my video animation is inside the timeline. Now as you can see the animation is only about 10 seconds long, but the music file is more than two minutes long. So we actually have to cut out a piece from it without anyone else noticing that. So let's get started with doing that. The first thing you always need is the intro, or at least a part from it. So let me just zoom in on that part so that we can get a piece from that. My introduction here actually, it comes in pretty slow as you can hear. And then it starts, we've got these two bumps. So I actually like that, I would like to use this. So I'm just going to take this whole intro, something like this, and just going to press the O key on my keyboard to set an out point, and that will select all the rest on my left. Then just drag that first part into my timeline, there we go. And already you can see that the intro is pretty long. It's going to collapse a little bit more. So what I'm actually going to do is cut off a piece from that fading in part. Just going to make this smaller like that. But also I'm going to add a transition here so that it doesn't start so abrupt. So just right click on here and say apply the default transition like that. And just drag that to, to the beginning. So now we have actually a pretty nice opening. Okay, it's not that nice yet. At the point where actually these boards come in, I actually want the music to start and that's actually at this point. So again, I'm just going to make it smaller and move it more to the left so that it starts at this point and I think this is a lot better now. Let's have a look. Perfect, this looks pretty nice. So the music continues right here and perhaps on the ending, so right here somewhere. You want to fade out the music at this point. Now we're not just going to like fade out or anything. No, I'm just going to take out the last part from this music file. So that we have this sound. And this fading is of course a lot better than if we would just fade it out. So again, 
press O to set an out point, but also press I to set an in point and just drag out a piece from the ending to your timeline. Again, this is pretty long, so just make that shorter. There we go. Now it's important that we're going to cut on the beat so that you don't hear that we have actually cut out a piece from this music file. So try to find the beat and cut right onto it. So that's this drum that I hear. And you can also see that in the spikes. So this is every time we can hear this drum. So right here, this is actually a pretty nice part. Also listen to the whole tune. So we've got this, t -t 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 -t. that's one part and we're going to need that whole part. We can't just get in the middle of that. So let's have a look. So let's have a listen again. All right, so at this part right here, a new ta -da 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 starts. So now let's have a look at the last part here. Okay, also pretty nice. We've got that same thing over there. So now we actually want to start right on the point where that tune starts. Let's have a listen. That's at this point here. Okay, perfect. So if we would like place these two next to each other, it should work. Okay, not exactly yet. This is something that you have to puzzle with. It seems like I've cut out a bit too much from it. So I just move this part to the right, then just enlarge it a little bit more back and, and put them together and listen to it again. Almost there, I think one frame more. All right, the beat goes on here perfectly. Now, of course, the transition doesn't sound that well. It's pretty abrupt, so we are going to set a transition between these two. And because we are remaining the beat sequence, we won't notice that much from this change. Okay, so the beat actually drops out pretty fast over here. So I actually might wanna increase my transition a bit more and also move the transition more to the right so that I retain that beat a bit longer. Nice, so now we actually have the impression that the drum is fading out, but the rest actually keeps on going. And that's because we have cut on the right place. So now we're only left with the sound effects. These are usually movements or elements touching each other, like a clap. But also specific sounds of a certain object. Now don't put a sound under each movement, but try to think which movements are faster than the rest. Like we have the flippy images on the ends. We can add like a fast swoosh to it but also specific sounds that relate to my content. And that's, for example, the projector, which has a very common sound. And lastly, you can emphasize objects to draw attention to them, like the boards that come in from different sites. When adding these sounds effects, also mind the volume of each sound. You don't want each sound to be very loud. When you have a rolling ball, that sound could be more subtle as if you would have a brick falling on the ground, which can be a lot louder. So play with the volume and don't be afraid to turn it down a lot. Subtle sounds can already give an extra dimension. So that was it again for this tutorial video. Again, all the resources can be found in the description below. And if you're interested to see part one and two from this tutorial series, then follow the annotations here on my left. Thank you again very much for watching and stay creative.